Well, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can provide my thoughts on the podcast host, Joe Rogan. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. So first, I'll take a quick look at the background of Joe Rogan, and then I'll get to my thoughts on him. Joe Rogan was born in Newark, New Jersey on August 11, 1967. His family moved to California when he was seven, then to Florida when he was 11. They eventually ended up in Massachusetts. Rogan became active in martial arts when he was younger. He even competed for a while, but gave it up because he was having frequent headaches. He went to college, but decided that it was pointless, so he dropped out. At age 24, he moved to Boston. He became a stand-up comedian in 1988. In 1994, he moved to California and worked on a few shows, including News Radio, which of course also featured Phil Hartman, who Rogan befriended. Rogan started conducting post-fight interviews for the Ultimate Fighting Championship and eventually became a commentator. He started working on the development of a television show, but then he accepted an offer to be the host on a show named Fear Factor. It ran from 2001 to 2006, but Rogan also came back in 2011 for the show's final season. He continued to work as a stand-up comedian as well. He was also featured in a number of movies. Rogan married in 2009. In December of that year, he started a podcast. The next year, he would name it The Joe Rogan Experience. He has continued in that role since that time, and the podcast has become one of the most successful anywhere. In May of 2020, he announced a $100 million deal that he made with Spotify. So moving to my thoughts on Rogan. Rogan is an interesting guy. Now, of course, everything I know about Rogan is based on the persona he projects, the image that he puts out to the public. The real person of Joe Rogan could be completely different. He's not easily categorized. For example, he describes himself as being fairly liberal, yet many see him as a figure for the extreme far right. He has an unusual mixture of beliefs about social issues that don't squarely fall into liberal or conservative ideology. He's pro-gun and generally supports individual liberties. He also supports a number of social programs like universal basic income and universal health care. Rogan's an advocate for the use of certain substances like psychedelics, specifically LSD, DMT, and mushrooms, He's also a big fan of marijuana. To say this is a recurring theme in his podcast is a bit of an understatement. As far as his podcast, it has an unusual format. Sometimes he appears fairly organized, and other times the interview is like a rocket without fins. The podcast is long format, going on for many hours, with Joe asking questions to the guest and offering his own perspective. He's had a number of guests on the podcast, just to name a few. Elon Musk, Edward Snowden, Mike Tyson, Jordan Peterson, Phil McGraw, Mel Gibson, Dan Aykroyd, Jay Leno, Ben Shapiro, Bernie Sanders, and many other people. Now, some of the people he's interviewed, like Alex Jones and Bob Lazar, are conspiracy theorists, which has led many to believe that Rogan is a conspiracy theorist, like the character that he played on the television show News Radio. Some have accused Rogan of spreading misinformation, being gullible, and investing too much in these conspiracy theories. For example, he doesn't always challenge fairly extraordinary claims that have been made by some of his guests. Now, that's not the same thing as making a claim, but a disciplined interviewer trying to get to the truth would probably be a little bit more confrontational. It's like every time he has a guest on, he's convinced by what they're saying, regardless of their position. So it seems like he kind of changes his mind quite a bit. At times, Joe Rogan has believed in various conspiracy theories himself, although, again, it seems like he goes back and forth. For example, he believed aliens were found in Roswell, New Mexico, JFK was killed by the government, astronauts did not land on the moon. As far as I know, he has changed his mind on that one. He also said that killer whales came together and made a decision not to attack humans after they saw a bomb being dropped from an aircraft. This one isn't really a conspiracy theory because the whales weren't really trying to do any harm, but I just found this one curious. Outside of conspiracy theories, 
there's also been other misinformation. Rogan has promoted this idea that cannabis does not lead to dependence or cause withdrawal symptoms when people stop using it. He changed his mind on the withdrawal part of that. He seems to believe that exercise can cure depression most of the time and doesn't really seem to believe that antidepressants are effective. Some people who suffer from depression have called Rogan's opinion simplistic and insensitive. I'm compelled to agree with those people who have depression. Depression is a serious mental disorder. It's not something that just can be dealt with in a trivial fashion. I think exercise can certainly help, but it is no substitute for mental health treatment. The reality is that Joe Rogan's podcast is not necessarily meant to be an accurate source of information, but rather it features unstructured conversations that can go in surprising directions. There's a lot of speculation, opinions, and theories. I think that's really the whole point of the show. Joe Rogan is relatable, an everyday guy. He doesn't consider himself an elitist. He doesn't put himself above other people most of the time. He asks all types of questions. He's not an intellectual, but he's intellectually curious. I think the key part of his appeal is really not about the technical accuracy, because that seems to be lacking in many areas. It's about honesty. He may or may not be wrong about any particular thing he says, but he's saying what he believes. Rogan's format brings up an important issue, though. Should celebrities who have a lot of influence always talk about science or otherwise be accurate? Do they always have to relay good information, or are they allowed to have off-the-cuff, somewhat disorganized discussions featuring the occasional conspiracy theory? I really don't have a problem with his format. I just worry that people may look at the show and think that it's all quality information. They might believe it's a substitute for legitimate sources of knowledge. There's a difference between relatable and sensible, and that distinction is lost on many. I think when Joe Rogan is considered problematic, it's probably more about how people use his podcast than it is specifically about what he's saying. He is exercising his freedom of speech. He invites guests on with all different types of opinions and positions, liberal, conservative, middle of the road. We see scientists, athletes, and entertainers. He often mentions the limits of his knowledge, how he's not an expert, how he doesn't know what he's doing. Again, there seems to be honesty. I can appreciate the argument against Rogan's podcast, though. Specifically, there are concerns about the misinformation, as I talked about. Misinformation is just spreading so fast from seemingly everywhere that to see another media product of any type occasionally promoting misinformation is concerning. I think the answer to the problem is really education. I feel as though many people have lost their ability to critically analyze data or they never had the ability in the first place. They don't know how to process data as it comes in. For example, they believe everything they hear. They disbelieve everything they hear. They don't trust authority. They trust authority too much. What we don't see here is a lot of people saying, what did the data indicate? What's logical and reasonable under the circumstances? There are people who literally look at Joe Rogan's podcast and think, I don't need to learn about this topic. They say, I heard Rogan and a guest talk about it for two hours. Now I know everything there is to know on that specific topic. Banking on Rogan to be scientifically accurate is like believing reading enough book titles eventually equals reading a book. I think a better way to look at Rogan's podcast would be, his interview gave me a lot to think about, inspired me to find other sources of information, and to conduct some research. I think there is also a tendency toward polarization that Rogan seems to bring out. Rogan tries to be somewhere in the middle politically, yet people tend to think of him as either good or bad, either on their side or against them. This dichotomous thinking is so disappointing in an age where we really need people to start solving problems logically. I find it interesting that some people like him because he's a centrist. They think of him as a free thinker, but other people despise him because they think he must have a secret political agenda and really be toward one side or the other. As far as Joe Rogan's potential personality profile, again, I can only base any profile on the persona, not on the actual person. Rogan's persona appears to be high in openness to experience. He's creative, intellectually curious, and interested in the abstract. He has mid-range to high conscientiousness. He does seem to have a good work ethic. He's been quite successful 
in his business endeavors. We see high extroversion. He's assertive, sensation-seeking, and talkative. Mid-range agreeableness. We see high and low facets with agreeableness. On the high side, he tends to be a little too trusting, seems to be straightforward, and he's altruistic. On the low side, he likes competition, and he does not always seem to have a lot of empathy for others. With neuroticism, we see a mid-range to low level. He seems fairly calm. So to sum things up, I find Joe Rogan to be entertaining. For me personally, I tend to prefer formats that are more compact and wander around a bit less, but I can certainly appreciate the appeal of his podcast. He does seem to have interesting guests much of the time. I typically don't find his podcast to be educational, which in my opinion is perfectly fine. There's a difference between entertainment and education. It's up to the person watching the podcast to know that problems can arise when entertainment substitutes for education. Those are my thoughts on Joe Rogan and his podcast. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.